We hear a lot about tape reading as traders, but what does it actually mean and how does it give you an edge in trading? Our guest today is Gilbert Mendez to talk about that. So Gilbert, how do you use tape reading to find good opportunities? Really good question. The way that I use tape reading is mostly to help me find those opportunities in those places where I can take a whole lot of size with very little risk. Um, it really gives me a confirmation that there are uh, institutional players putting money at work. And so if I'm looking to buy a support and I got confirmation on the tape telling me there's an institutional uh, player behind it, then it, it just allows me to take a lot more size and gives me that extra confidence about the trade. All right, so if I see support or resistance on a chart, that would be the first indicator that something, a trade may be presenting itself. And then you go into the tape and see time and sales going by, and that gives you a, an idea of whether or not this is the right spot? Right, so the, what I, that's exactly how I start looking at all my trades. I start with an idea, looking at the charts. You know, we all look at the same support and resistance levels, but the reality is that I'd really, I, I like to zoom in and keep an eye on uh, what is the market actually doing around those, around those prices, and then I look at my level two and try to figure out is there actually any kind of interest in buying the stock or selling the stock at those prices. Now, a lot of traders have said that high frequency trading and these phantom orders that come and go are make it a lot more difficult to read the tape. Have you found that to be the case? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I do think that there's a huge edge in trading pre-market after hours and then the first 20 minutes of the open just off the ticks. I, I call that reactive trading. You see something and then you react to it. But then after that, you know, you have to go into that mindset where time is more important. So you're not really reacting to what you see on the time and sales. It's more like it's giving you more clues. And then you put, you build your trading idea around that, around that concept. And how many trades a day are you typically taking? Uh, well, it depends on the day. Uh, typically anywhere between uh, 40 to 50 ideas. Um, but in terms of execution, sometimes I can put on you know, maybe seven, eight hundred different uh, orders in the market just throughout the entire day. So I'm a very active trader. Are you a pretty strict day trader? Uh, I, I'm a little bit of a hybrid. So I have two different accounts. I have my intraday account and I have my, uh, what I call my swing account. And even on my day trading account, sometimes I take positions uh, for, for the next day or two. So the question then becomes is how do you keep day trades becoming, from becoming swing trades just because maybe they're, you've lost a little bit and you want to wait for it to come back? No, it's more like if I if I'm, if I'm, if I'm have a really good feel for the stock and if I feel it's got more potential, and lately since I'm trading on a much bigger time frame, it just sometimes it takes me, you know, it might take three or four uh, more hours for, for the trade to reach its full potential. So I'll, I'll take it overnight. And you mentioned the longer time frame. What is it that you're trading on? I, I'm, I've been starting to trade a lot more off the hourly charts. Uh, just because of exactly for that reason of the HFTs, trying not to be the reactive trader and, and sitting more on, on positions that might take you know, eight or nine hours of holding time. Gilbert, thanks for your time. Absolutely, thanks for having me. You're watching the moneyshow.com video network.